This is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human skull, this is odorous from Guam. I'm going to the Fear Factory. This is George Corps, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Double Drop. This is Wade from Our Lost Enemy. The Magnificent Cool Style of Tennessee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Anderson. He's right from Club Emerald Hill. This is Gary Green from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Before we go into this episode of the Ever Black Podcast, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, the Occult Clothing Brand Electric, which love amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies, dresses and more. Check out their full range at electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Also, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the Ever Black Podcast on Spotify and iTunes podcast streams and see all our video interviews on the Ever Black YouTube channel. You can also also read all our articles and reviews at everblack.com.au. All right, on with the show. Thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, how's everything going on this rainy Monday night? You staying safe up there in Brizzo? We're yeah. doing what we can. We're not wearing masks because we're in my house and I don't yeah. want to wear a mask in my house. But, um, you know, other than that, yeah, everything's pretty good. Everything's we're, pretty it's, good. it's raining here. It's It's been a miserable few days. It's just been that constant medium low level like rain to drizzle for about three or four days straight so that's cool but um you know when when you're in the studio and there's warm lights and all that kind of stuff it uh, makes you feel a bit better so we're sticking around in here awesome awesome yeah it's good for the old creativity this this weather i find very much so. yeah awesome Awesome. it's also good for eating unhealthy food and staying (laughs) under covers and watching yeah. I, I I ate lots of uh, Maccas today, and I feel terrible. Oh, yeah. But you know, you know what? Your life. You live it how you want, man. You eat all I, the Maccas. Yeah, yeah, and then feel bad about it later, and and drink yeah. ter- terrible big <laughs> like this trooper. It's terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought you know I'll give it a go. I had the the Metallica one the other night, and yeah. uh, I, I'm. You got to give them a go, right? And then you can say you've had them, and. You can leave a review and move on, <laughs> with, your move on with your life. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. You guys need your own uh, stranger beer. Well, we uh, we yeah. might we might be working on a, uh, a coffee. Yeah, a stranger branded <laughs> uh, blend. Hey. Uh, the coffee. It's stranger beans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that stranger bean. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Make it work. Yeah, well, because uh, Daniel and Drew both used to be specialty baristas, oh, and so they know all the people. And there's a there's a, a, a specialty roastery here in Brisbane that's amazing, and the dude's actually a fan of our music. So we've been chatting, and yeah, so we're probably going to come up with some kind of collaboration. We've just got to make sure that it's the the pun in the title of the copy is is good enough to actually sell. Yeah, hundred uh, yeah, percent. We've got to work with. What would it be? Yeah. I don't know. We, we, we've got some candles in our merch for, for Kaleidoscope. And we had some some really great names for some scents, like Scent for Dad. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, based, yeah. Based off titles from the last album. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, coffee's, coffee's a bit harder. Yeah, we'll figure it, it out there, man. It is. But, hey, put me down. Put me down for it. But, of course, in the meantime, your much-anticipated new album, Kaleidoscope, is out this week on april 9 and i've been cranking it and uh you just dropped the single the gemini and that's incredible um it's got a lot of people pumped day eh? it's it's amazing yeah I, I mean yeah first of all thank you and second of all we really hope people are listening to it <laughs> and the fact that anyone's listening to it is is, is pretty cool yeah, yeah yeah that's the thing man you never want to like i don't think i'll ever get to the point even if we blow the fuck up one day and a selling out arenas like that'll ever happen but even if that were to ever happen i i still would be amazed at anyone that turned up i'd be like really <laughs> you came out this is sick yeah. oh my god <laughs> and that's how i feel about people listening to our music we've had some really good responses but i'm still just like holy shit people like it at all that's amazing <laughs> yeah i kept I expecting like like I know it's to sound really uh, narcissistic. I know it's good. Like I know the music's really good. I'm just saying that. But mm. I expected bad things, like bad comments and shit. But we have had zero. Yeah, it's all been positive, and that that's what's getting me the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's been very positive. Yeah. 
Are you planning on doing anything to celebrate on 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 Friday? It's Friday, right? April ninth, Friday. Yes. Yeah, it is Friday. Our, yeah, um, Friday. Our, Drew's girlfriend bought us a bottle of champagne to celebrate something from like a year ago, and it's still sitting there. So maybe this is we, we couldn't celebrate it because of COVID, obviously. Oh yeah, that's oh, what it was. Yeah, it was, that's yeah, that's the thing that thing happened <laughs> last year. That's yeah, happening. Yeah. So so may, maybe this is the week where we finally open the bottle. Yeah. Hey, what a way to celebrate that. I mean, this right. is really good. I mean, it's it's definitely shown an evolutionary step with the band. It's a, oh, thank you very much, man. Absolutely. Really appreciate you saying so. Yeah. No, and the rev- I've been seeing reviews pop up from other people too. And as we mentioned before, like it's been really positive. And um, I know you played a show the other night in Mansfield Tavern with uh, a Sucker Punch and Adriatic and Carulian yeah. and Seraphic. How was that playing some of those tracks live? Yeah, man, it was it was really good. Um, we're getting, you know, we've a couple of the new songs that we've been kind of seasoning the set with over the last couple of months, uh, just getting more used to them. Um, but we're we're slowly coming into our own um, with these new songs. Like it's always difficult, like figuring out, like you know, little things like where are the bits where you can you know you can rock the fuck out and still play all right. Like these are the things you have to figure out, like by playing, you know, playing twenty or thirty shows with the songs and like nutting out all the little details. But we're slowly getting there, and it went really well, and we had some really great responses mm. to the great, tracks. Great photos. Yeah. Yeah. Had, uh, yeah, they looked Bas- cool. Had Andrew Basso from Melbourne, just up in Brisbane, he came along and did some some photos. He's he's the the master of live music photography in Australia. Yeah. If you like live music photography and girls in lingerie, yes. you should definitely go to his Instagram. <laughs> I can highly recommend it. <laughs> there you go. Very, very good at what he does. Yeah. But yeah, man, like um a, a moment ago, you you said there's a clear evolution in the sound. Like that's kind of we've heard that sentiment from quite a few people and it's really gratifying because you want to um, like there, there, there's a certain strangerness to our sound or, you know, like to any band, they have their sound and you don't want to sort of come out with something that makes you sound like a completely different band. Um, but you always want to sound like you've, like knocked it up a notch from the previous release. And that's what we've heard just about everybody. So we're super, super happy about that. And I like the synthy stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's um, flavor. uh, Yeah, for sure. We all, um, we all collectively got pretty into this band called the midnight. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, So there's a genre called synth wave, which is basically using um, uh, modern, you know, electronic production techniques, um, but using all 80s synthesizer kinds of sounds. So it's like, so it's modern and polished and, and all that sort of stuff, but it's still very nostalgic. Like mm. um, they call it like retro wave and that kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Um, and yeah, there's a band called The Midnight and they're sort of one of the bigger acts in that genre. And they just, they just write the most kick-ass songs. For anyone listening, go and listen to this, the album Nocturnal, start to finish, it is magic. Anyway. Well, you'll, you'll see influences from that album, yeah. particularly in, yeah. in like Eleventh Hour and, and yeah. Siren. And Eleventh Hour, Creatures in the Canopy, Sirens, all these songs, like you can really hear that we've been listening to The Midnight. So <laughs> And Voyager. Yeah, and Voyager. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, the new yeah. song Gemini, like I actually didn't even make the connection at all, um, but uh, I was having a chat with Chris Demelko from um, uh, Orpheus Omega, and he got he he messaged me about the song. And he was like, "At what point are you going to tell Voyager that they can retire now?" Uh, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh shit, yeah!" Because it, it totally sounds <laughs> like a Voyager track. But that's a compliment because Voyager are kick ass. So. They are the incredible, incredible band. Yeah, the, the, loveliest, the loveliest people. Li- li- yeah, been. probably the nicest people on the planet. So they are. Yeah. And you know what? I got to say, I'd love to see you guys tour together. Like a big oh, oh man, wait. that'd be dope we've only played the one show with them it was like years ago because it was yeah. us and, and then caligula's horse and it was a really fun night but um yeah i think i think we would be a good uh, a good mesh mm. it's one party yeah and and caligula's horse as well as well yeah. man it's the prog scene in australia is really growing really fast and and yeah man. Re- it just gets stronger hey 
Like, I think um, everyone's looking to Australia to be the next prog thing. Like, yeah, like, yeah. There's so much good shit coming out at the moment. Hundred um, percent. And it was all like it was all um, like the original torch was lit back in the day by Carnival, and everyone's just been trying to catch up ever since. Twelve foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve yeah. foot. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like it's true that there's some amazing bands coming out of Australia right now. Um, and you know, where we feel super lucky to know some of these people and have played shows with them. Um, but I think it's also worth, uh, remembering that a lot of these sort of bands that blow up or whatever, like Caligula's horse or whatever, it's like, they, there's a stupid amount of work that happened for years and years before they kind of exploded. You know, it's like, um, I think Rick Beato had a video that was called like, the 24 year overnight success, yeah. like that kind of thing. It's just yeah. like these bands work for ages and then they finally break through and it's just like, whoa, they came out of nowhere. It's yeah, like, yeah. well, actually, <laughs> they've been kicking around. Forever. It's it's overnight to the audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's That's right. You don't see all the blood, sweat and tears and beers and all that stuff and, and the bags under the eyes from hours of, you know, working overtime yeah, and doing all that stuff. Actually, um, I sat down, I had lunch the other day with um, Sam from Caligula's Horse and he was telling me all about, you know, their their early days and they like, they worked harder than any band I've heard of. Like he was telling me that lit- literally from right after they released their first album through to when they released their fourth album, it was just nonstop, constant every week, like just continual work. So they, you know, as... Caligula's Horse are one of those bands that's just like you can't help looking up to from a musical perspective. Like what they do is just absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. But they've worked their fucking asses off for it too. And I love that. I love those stories. And you guys seem to be following in those footsteps as well. I mean, I know it's really difficult at the moment with what's going on in the world. The little thing that happened like a week that's ago with the stripper trading. And- <laughs> yeah. What was it called? C- Casona? C- the coronavirus? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> but I, I think, we, especially with this album, like once things sort of start easing off again, I think you guys are going to be really busy. Really, really busy. Which is... I really what hope you're right. To look forward to. No, absolutely. Yeah. We've, we've already had to... Well, we... we... We have we have postponed one tour. No, no, no. We have booked and subsequently <laughs> cancelled three Australian tours and yeah. a Japan tour. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, it was uh, not not fun. Um, but the thing is, it's like the 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 main thing that made all that stuff bearable was knowing that kind of no one else was touring either. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, you know, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's the, we we there's no FOMO because you know, there's nothing to miss out on right now. But yeah, man, look, I really I really hope you're right. Um we, you know, obviously we've got the same we've got the same hopes and dreams as every other band that, you know, puts music out and creates albums. We want to tour, we wanna like I think for all of us collectively, the bucket list right at the top is Europe and the States. Like if we can if we can get there, that'd sort of I, I think I'd be able to die a happy man at that point. <laughs> but it's like um, we've we've heard from a lot of people close to us that this new album has the potential of taking us further in that direction. Yes. So uh, I've been very happy to hear that kind of feedback. Um, you know, I'm actually at the point now where it's like a, I'm actually after some, like, criticism because we haven't had any yet. Yeah. Like, it oh, sounds really? like, Don't put yeah, that, that out there. <laughs> constructive criticism because it's like yeah. obviously I, I love i love that people are enjoying it that sort of stuff and i've heard almost nothing bad about it but at this point i'm like i'm always wanting to do better it's like, what can we do better so yeah it's like it's just curiosity yeah like, or maybe, maybe it's just that you know inbuilt need for self-flagellation yeah like there's, there's definitely <laughs> things like listening back on it where certain parts and i'm sure you're the same because you you mixed it mixed it mixed it you mixed it um (laughs) but like there's stuff that we could have improved on no oh for sure yeah there's that's the thing it's like you never you never are like a hundred percent happy with a release you're always like no i could have done that differently or i wish i'd tweak this or this particular sonic element is not right or whatever but it's interesting to see what other people Mm. would pick up yeah things that we aren't paying attention to that we think is good but yeah 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 i don't know i'm not asking for criticism but yeah yeah 
but something constructive would, would, yeah. would be cool. Okay. I don't know. All right. <laughs> what about, yeah. What, what, what do you like, man? Give, give us some constructive. What, some did, what didn't you like? <laughs> I put you on a the hard chair. call. You know that it is really it is a hard call because I actually really actually genuinely enjoyed it. Um, what do you see? This you can't please everybody, but the feedback <laughs> so far has been really good, and I enjoyed it. I had it on loop today at work while I was working, and awesome. I, I I didn't get bored of it. I enjoyed it. Got me through my few hours of work, and uh, you know, took me on a little little journey while I was packaging things up it was good yeah, but i can't i don't know maybe i don't know if you put it out there th- there's going to be someone that'll be like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, but, oh, yeah. There, there but, will be, yeah. i don't we're know first yeah the thing has to, has to come out that is maybe correct. we're going to get this torrent of like really <laughs> shitty reviews in like three days time. yeah maybe it's just because the singles have come out not the rest of the album they'll yeah. be like well the album tracks are Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Where'd you record it? So uh, the, there's a room next just to this one in, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. You, yeah, like, you yeah, you go got through it. that yeah, door yeah. and if you keep going. <laughs> that was weird. Um, <laughs> like, like, dude. No, we, uh, we recorded the drums down at the, uh, unfortunately, now rip uh yeah now dead the studio circuit um on the gold coast which is um while it was alive that studio was was kind of a big deal um everyone recorded there from like um uh, sky, harbor. sky harbor and uh, yeah could give horse recorded most of their drums there from the last few albums um just a, a bunch of really cool bands have recorded there. It's this big amazing million dollars like builds down there and the guy that was running it was like renting it out like crazy cheaply like it was it literally had all the best microphones and gears, this huge acoustically treated room. And it was like 350 bucks a day. It was amazing. So, um, uh, and there was no time limit. Like he was literally like, yeah, you can rock up whenever you want, go home whenever you want. And it's 350 a day. It was like such a good deal. So anyway, we, um, we recorded the drums there, uh, which was really cool. That took about five days. Um, and acoustics as well. Yeah. Yeah. And the acoustics and then everything else we did here. So, um, yeah. I mean, my my main job is I produce bands, so I um, I I record and mix and produce for a living. So having all of the studio stuff set up here kind of made that a lot easier. Um, and you know, also on top of that, like the 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 guitars and the bass and everything it was all track direct. Like we didn't we didn't use a real amplifier. We used Axe Effects's and um, uh, the vocals. I, I've got a little vocal booth. Sorry, it just reamped it. Did all reamping stuff? No, so just straight into the Axe FX three yeah. and Pro Tools, and that was cool. it. Like we, we we took a DI as well, just in case we wanted to reamp. But the the we worked really hard on getting the tone right at the start, so we just went with that. Um, and I've got a little vocal booth here, and so we just recorded all the vocals. The um, the way it sort of worked was um, uh, Tom did all the lead vocals on the album, obviously because he's the lead singer. <laughs> Um, with the exception of Jester, which I did the lead vocals for, um, all of the backing vocals are me, basically. Um, Except for Jester, which is <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of Tom backing in Jester, yeah. But uh, so uh, we, you know, we spent lots of time getting all the lead vocals right, and then after that, it was just a case of me sitting here on my own SM57 in front of the computer, just like singing layers and layers and layers of harmonies. So yeah, it was um, the whole process was like. It was, it was pretty stressful, man, because like we got the drums done and that was cool. That all went to plan. And then that thing, that thing that happened, happened. <laughs> and uh, the, yeah, the, the, some sort of, some pandemic. kind of illness yeah. took, took hold. And um, what happened was all the, ba- like the bands I was working with at the time pulled out of the studio. Oh. So I had to go and drive Uber to, um, to keep my bills paid. But the thing was, is that like, there was no one going anywhere and JobKeeper hadn't been released yet. So I, so literally I was working like 12 hour days, making about 150 bucks. And then I'd come home and I'd trap guitars or bass or vocals or whatever for like six hours then go to sleep and just do that repeat for like, and we, we were like sneaking over here to track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technically we weren't allowed to. 
Yeah. Do it. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was it was a tricky time. Man. We were just going to work. Yeah, yeah. It was a very stressful time, but that was um, this time last year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, was actually right time. now. Yeah, because yeah. I had the same issue. I did. Yeah, right. Some, okay. some sneaky, sneaky things, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just oh man. Well, see, so like we were lucky in Brisbane because we had, you know, like the, the pandemic hit, we had basically no cases at all and the borders were closed, like, you know, tighter than a vice. So, you know, everyone did the, the stay at home thing and the masks thing, but we always, we didn't need to because there were no cases. It didn't spread here at all. So life actually compared to, comparatively with other States, yeah. um, life came back to normal pretty quickly here, like within a matter of a few months. But there was just that crunch time for me where I had no free time at all. It was really, really fucking stressful. It was really mean the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I was so stressed. <laughs> but we got it done. Yeah. Uh, and that's right. So, yeah. And it, it came together well. And, um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a really big difference between producing your own band to producing someone else's. Like, it's not that I care differently because I don't want anything to leave my studio that doesn't sound good, but there's this, or it doesn't sound as good as I can possibly make it, but there is this whole other weight on your shoulders knowing that it's like, it's your music. And so it's like, there's, there's so much, I don't know. I feel like there's so much more writing on it. So, mm. I mean, like all of this stress, it's all like self invented. Like it's, you know, no one's imposing it on me. Head. Yeah. <laughs> but it is what it is, you know? But I mean, you guys signed with um, Octane and uh, Wild Thing as well, Wild Thing Records. Yeah, that, that was a really interesting time because we um, we played the last show we played last year before COVID um, was a, a battle of the bands in a in a, a Wacken to, to like go over and play Wacken in Germany. Yeah. We won the Brisbane Heat, and just as we were about to go down to Melbourne, COVID hit, so we couldn't play it. It's still like being postponed, but the the organizer contacted us and um, things Mm. happened and we signed up to his management uh, Mm. and bookings for shows and stuff just as COVID hit. So we basically had this huge team now Mm. and over time we like, we signed to Octane, we signed to Wild Thing, but we, we weren't touring, we couldn't play anything. We just had to sort of sit on top of the album for like wow. nine months yeah well we couldn't play shows and we had this like great team the first time we had a bookings team and management and mm. we couldn't use it to its potential so now yeah it's like well it's shit it's kind of the floodgates are kind of opening now yeah a, a little bit like there's still a lot stuff's happening still not fully open though because it's like you know the borders are closed again and it's like yeah. we don't know when you're going to be able to tour but it like we're, we're starting to we're finally feeling like we're being able to properly make the best use out of this really great team that's supporting us because we've got um yeah because we've we've got all the guys at octane we've got all the guys at um the hard drive agency we've got um we've got all the guys at wild thing and so there's this big team and destroy all lines and destroy all lines as well so it's like it's sort of a weird feeling when you're used, used to doing everything yourself and all of a sudden there's just like emails flying back and forth all over the place from different people organizing stuff and you're just like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and yeah. stuff that we don't have to respond to, I think is the the, the, yeah. the weirdest thing. Yeah. Because I generally do all the emails and things. Mm. So it's like, oh, I, we got an email. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't need to do anything for that because you just, have- yeah, I just, I just see it. In saying <laughs> yeah. that, always shout out to, to Mission um, and Bailey. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Like yeah, absolutely. part of the team, like the they dream team. are doing amazing work. And yeah. with you guys, and, and during this whole thing, like awesome work, guys. So no, hundred percent. No, like Mish is like the hardest working PR person I think I've ever met. Like um, her and I were hanging out a little while ago, and she was telling me that uh, sometimes she sets alarms at two a.m. to get up to make sure she sends something off at a time when someone in Germany is most likely to read the email. <laughs> like shit, just shit like that. Like she's so crazy over the top and like i I mean i i I know bailey is too but the thing is like bailey's kind of like one step removed now that he's sort of managing so many different things but i hear he's in melbourne and he's in melbourne so i hear from me 
he's just that he's like the hardest worker. He, he is a machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the amount of shit that he does and manages to put together, like that dude is yeah. incredible. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent, hundred percent. Good call, man. Good call out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and in regards to the album cover. I like how it said it's got that theme. It sort of also runs through the single covers as well. It's like a, it was like a portal, a doorway. Yeah. Like, uh, how, how does that tie into the kaleidoscope? Well, <laughs> kind of doesn't. Okay, so well, it's a, it's a long explanation. It, it, yeah, it's a the, look. It okay. kind of is what happened way. was we came up with the title for the album, um, and we stuck with it, um, but. The artwork idea that Chris, uh, Chris Mangos, um, Chris P. Stevenson Mangos, AKA, Mangos. A, AKA Chris P. Mangos, um, the idea he came up with, the art was so great that we just went like, yeah, it doesn't necessarily tie into the kaleidoscope idea, but it still is a fucking bitching looking thing. And he, he was in the middle of finalizing his uh, drafts for Seahorses Rise Radiant. So they were kind of... They're a little bit similar. We're yeah. Like, yeah, we don't want to. Like, we, we really didn't want to look like we were ripping Seahorse yeah. off because, like, we're obviously big fans of them. And friends with the guys. Yeah, and, and friends with them. Like, like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, his, yeah. his initial drafts looked a lot like the Rise Radiant stuff, and we were like, yeah, nah, try something else. So, we went away and he came back with the portals thing. Um, because, oh, that's right. Because the idea that we had, which we gave to him, and he that's what he came back with was it would be really cool if you're looking at the front cover and you're actually looking down the barrel of the album. So each portal, as it gets smaller, is thematically linked to each song. So the outside one is 11th Hour, which is very dark and industrial yeah. and everything. So we've got the warehouse. And then the next one, Gemini, is sort of set in this like sci-fi desert. There's like a broken moon in the thing because that's like a sci-fi kind of song. And then Jungles is the third song. Obviously, so, the jungle. <laughs> yeah, obviously the jungles. And then Jester, which is like the, the ballroom, ballroom and that sort of stuff. So it's like you're looking right down the barrel of the album. And then when you open the the booklet inside, it's got it, it continues the singles, and you can see like we could only fit four on the front. Yeah, because so, it got too yeah, small. Yeah. yeah, so we've got the other the other four around the other side, which is really cool. That yeah, is awesome. So. I love it. Yeah, thanks, man. We're, we're really happy with how it came out. Like, once again, just shout out to Chris. He is the dude. Nicest guy. Super easy to work with. Like, really generous. Just a lovely human being. And so he did all the he did all our artwork on the first album as well. And what I really love about him is that he's a chameleon. Like, you can basically, he can come back with whatever idea you want to run with and have something really unique, you know? And to me, that's the, that's the mark of a really great graphic designer. So yeah. Great. Nothing, nothing he gave us, any of the drafts were bad. Like there's still drafts we want to use eventually. Yeah. 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 yeah like, I, the, the first, the first jungles draft, the, like the single artwork. Oh we never, yeah. We never even planned to have it as a single. Like I reckon we should just release him as t-shirts because yeah. honestly, like, yeah, he did some, he did some designs for us that were just bloody. wonderful. Yeah. 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 Like just really properly gorgeous <laughs> design. So we'll probably wear. Let's put them on t-shirt. Yeah, let's we'll do that. That's a really good idea. See, and then <laughs> or you just you should just get one of those actual portals. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. You Look, can get to you work. Can, you can get behind the, the the quantum physics on that one and get back to us. That'd be sweet. Yeah, we'll build them on stage and then just oh. Yeah. That would, you know what? That would actually be pretty cool to have. Well, not actual portals on stage, but you know what I mean, <laughs> like that kind of mechanism that had screens in it, so you can like. Yeah. With we're, the we're looking artwork, getting, yeah. Banners and shit with a portal each side of the drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we could build them, if we could build them and do a concert in five continents on the one stage, that'd be mm. sick. Yeah. Some like death clock shit right there. Yeah. See. Yeah. That's exactly right. I'm 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 all for it. But um, <laughs> I mean, you, we, we were talking before about you know it's coming out on um, vinyl as well, white vinyl. That looks incredible. Have yeah. you guys got yeah. a copy of that yet? Uh, we should have it tomorrow. <laughs> we haven't actually seen them yet. So yeah, we we've only seen the test pressings to make sure the audio works. But yeah, they look really cool. We um the splatter especially. Yeah, because we got we yeah because we got the white one and we got a clear one with blue splatter on it. it looks really cool too. Um. We, this is the first time we've ever made vinyls, which is really exciting. 
It makes us feel like a legit band now because yeah. we have vinyls. <laughs> uh, our pockets definitely felt it though. Yeah, they did. Yeah. God, they're expensive. They are so expensive to yeah. make. But you watch the, all these you... bands do limited runs of like, oh, we're just going to do, we'll just do 500 of these. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to our 3,000 of this other colors. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they're Christ. so expensive. So, yeah. what were you going to say? I was just going to say there is something really special about having that physical media. Like yeah. on vi- the, I mean, it's an old sort of mm. thing. It's yeah, like yeah. cassettes. Like b- bands bring out cassettes now too. But there's something I, I think that's pretty damn special about holding that and and seeing that. Art. For sure, with with vinyls, I have hundred percent agree with you. We're at the point now where I'm not even sure why we're printing CDs. Like we are. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know why? Because who uses CD players anymore? Like yeah, I think I think it's more the the collection thing. Like yeah, but I mean, like that's the thing is like you can have the vinyl thing, but it's like if it's just something someone's got to buy and then put on the shelf and never pull out, it just feels like well, I mean, for that kind of person, there's probably so there's probably so few of those people. Like the vinyl thing, I get yeah. because it's an act, it's an ex- experience. You have to go and put on the record player and that sort of stuff, and it's like it's something that you want to do because it's vibey and it's cool. But with CDs, it's sort of like I really do think. They they're at the end of their life cycle. Like I would be very surprised if we print CDs for future releases. Like, do you know what the weirdest like, thing about that is though? Is that apparently yeah. CDs are very popular still in Japan. Really? Apparently, yeah. that's Ooh. what a friend of mine told me. He's like, yeah, they still have CD stores with posters and promo stuff, and it's the physical media over there that's still popular. We're thinking about here in terms of like what's popular like we don't know what's yeah you know what that's true else. it's probably worth having a chat with um the guys at wild thing because they'd have a much better idea than we would. yeah but i mean i know exactly what you mean though like here yeah, yeah. and probably in america as well like it's all about how many you can fit into your phone you know yeah, so that's... easy these days but vinyl i it's it it's weird that you know, it, people kind of they they take pride of putting an album on that that record player, taking the picture, and and yeah. showing everybody what they're listening yeah. to. Well, you can't really do that with a CD. Not really, but uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And when you get a vinyl, it's so big you, think, you've yeah, got a poster the, at the same time. You know, yeah, it's the size element as well. It's yeah. like, yeah, look at my little CD. Look at this fucking thing. Yeah. So we've we've all unfortunately learned that sometimes size does matter. Yes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the, the candle idea as well you were talking about before. Who, whose idea yeah. was that? That's really cool. Well, so um, uh, <laughs> Link's lovely wife has her own candle making company. Oh, awesome. So she, she designs all these beautiful candles and, like, she really gets into the, you know, the, the chemistry and putting different smells together and see how they work and everything. And so we was... saw, we saw, uh, we had the idea a while ago, Drew and I were like, oh, is it cool? Is it like, is anyone going to buy it? And then we saw Pliny release his candles. Yeah. And we were like, fuck, we can do it. Let's so, yeah, do it. We didn't copy Pliny because we already <laughs> had the idea. <laughs> but now like, um, uh, what's the other wild thing band? Acolyte. Like they've got yeah. candles too. Like, oh it's, yeah, that's, that's right. It's that's now right. a wild thing records thing. Uh, yeah, staple cool. candles. Yeah, these <laughs> ones. Um, what was the sense we went? Uh, blue sage and sea salt. Yeah, blue sage and sea salt. Yeah. It's a, it's an unusual but very pleasant and and striking scent. It's lovely. It's not overpowering. It's it's subtle, but it's really nice. If there's like a if there is a scent that you could say it's the stranger, I'd say we 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 got as close as you could really. Not Dan shirtless in a room. No, okay. no one deserves that. <laughs> I think that's a really good idea, though. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm keen to check that out because it is different. Everyone's doing the the hot sauce thing at the moment, which I'm yeah. totally for. But there Me are too. others. There's, there's other sources. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when's it? Why, when's, why, being... when's Ranger Aoli? <laughs> see, see? Yeah. oh, there's like, <laughs> see? oh, there's like, was it Prego? Prego sauce? What's that? Prego sauce? Oh, yeah. But you could call it yeah. Progo sauce. Yeah. yeah. Oh, bam. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but looking into the future, of course, touring yeah. and, and and things like that. You said you've 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 had to push back tours and stuff. But have you got anything that's sort of locked in in the meantime? 
Oh, we've got we've got one thing that we can't talk about. We've got Come one on, thing. Come on, mate. No, 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 no sorry. We'll, we'll get we got, we, we will. Um, <laughs> uh, we got one thing that's more or less locked in. We can't talk about another. Uh, we've got um, an album launch show that is in uh, that is close to being locked in. So we can't give a date for that yet because we're still negotiating, but that'll happen. And then the tour thing is um, very much in the planning in the planning and organizing stages. Mm. So it is happening, but again, it's all around borders. Like because we keep thinking things are fine, and then borders close again. So. Yeah, it, there's been a lot of things. Like the first tour that we had to postpone or, or cancel was obviously because of COVID. But the the latest one we had to do was because the venues were either the the venue capacity they were favoring. <laughs> people who could fill the, the, the space so like bigger bands mm. yeah would uh, you know win the the, the contest dates, yeah yeah the contest yeah because so, that's the thing it's like now that now that things are opening up again there's all these bands that have been sitting around for ages yeah and now everyone's desperate to tour so it's not where it used to be where it was a lot more staggered and so you had a lot of free you know you had a, a lot more options when it came to venues because everyone's now jumping in at the same time so it's as a well lot. as venues closing down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot fewer venues. So like there's like the crowbar here. Yeah. So that's one. You know, like the probably one of the biggest that's like, local. It metal. was like the metal venue in Brisbane. So yeah. it's like that, that. A lot of that's happened around the place. So it's it's harder. It's it's for so many reasons. It's harder to book a tour right now. Um, you know, unless you're like a much bigger band that can fill out much bigger venues because they're still available. Yeah it's all of it's all of the clubs and that kind of thing that everyone's sort of fighting over so we just we can't we can't give any dates right now because stuff is being organized but it's a laborious process so yeah it's a very different world now yeah it is yeah totally agree with that one but uh hopefully i mean hopefully we get to see you guys on the coast soon yeah Mo's, Mo's or vinnie's or Mo's, yeah. Oh, cool. vinnie's, oh, vinnie's. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> where about you like, where about you I'm I'm uh, I'm bit halfway. I'm sort of northern end of the coast. Yeah, right. Okay. So I I sort of live between both worlds. Yeah, mm. true that, true that, true that. But yeah, I do I I do like uh, Vinnie's and Moe's. It's what we got. Yeah. And I'll, I I you know what support it. <laughs> yeah, Vinnie's uh, Vinnie's is a tiny but very cool place. <laughs> Well, didn't it win like Gold Coast uh, Gold Coast Nightclub of the Year twenty twenty or something recently in the Star Wars? Yeah, show? yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy time. Yeah, very, very yeah. unexpected because it's the <laughs> tiniest little place. But yeah, it's still cool. good on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. It, it's good times though. I, I like going down and and having a few beers. But uh, of course, in the meantime, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out tonight. The the Stranger Kaleidoscope comes out this week on April 9, and we'll have all the links down here. Uh, and, of course, get the bundles. Go and get the bundles with the links. Get yourself a candle. Buy some vinyl, guys. I'm pointing at somebody out there. Maybe I'm just pointing into the – I don't know. But um, <laughs> it's, it's a directive. Go spend money. Money it's that pretty- way. Yeah, they're pretty cool bundles, honestly. Like, yep. they're actually pretty good value. I think for like, yeah, you would say that. I would. For like eighty nine dollars, you get like a t shirt, <laughs> you get a vinyl, you get a CD, you get a candle, a candle you get a tote, tote bag, bag, like a bunch of stuff for like ninety bucks. It's awesome. So do it. Yeah, do, it. do it. Do it. Do it. Thanks, boys. It's uh, been cool hanging, and uh, we will see you very soon. I hope. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, man. Appreciate you having us on.